past fatal heart impact, past painful starts. In fact, I blast tasteful thoughts and past. I back up my actions, fact, don't mask, grab reactions, jack, attack with every word, then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so for excuse. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember, you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here, and now, whenever we last left off with this series, a lot of things have happened for Midoriya, and his entire life got flipped entirely to its side, in the matter of one single day. Now. Here is what happened with Midoriya. During his fight with the Nomu during the USJ, Midoriya pushed his body to his physical limits until he broke, breaking 180 bones in his body and losing his right arm in the process. Number two, him and Katie began their relationship, albeit not in the way either of them really did expect. Then again, you can hardly ever expect things to go as planned. Number three, Midoriya's father is back in the picture. Number four, Midoriya was pulled from UA. Number five, All Might has become aware of One for All's evolution and the way the quirk is currently going. Now, with that being said, it has been almost two weeks since the USJ, Midori is still at home, and he has been trying to get better. As he does go to the hospital this morning, and proceed to try and go through physical therapy. Up until he has to try and walk on his feet, Midoriya making it about five steps before he does actually put weight down on one of his legs and feel short pain, collapsing as he can't even grab the rail with his left hand, him trying to put the weight down on his forearm as he would fall over. Now, this would piss Midoriya off. He knows exactly how powerful he is, and then there's the way he currently feels. All his dreams, everything he's been trying to do, his entire life, he feels like it's worth nothing anymore. He feels like he is just on the sidelines. He's back at square one. Now, that is what Midori does think after he does hit the floor. And he just does lay there for one second as the nurses and doctors do try to help Midoriya. Him actually manifesting Black Whip out of his back, using the tendrils or Black Whip to grab onto the rails and pull him up onto his feet. Doctors and nurses watching that, along with Hisashi, who was taken aback, as they do to inform Midoriya not to use his quirk, because he could put more strain on his body. Midoriya just having a snide remark and yelling at them which one, as they are taken aback. Midoriya and his father, then at least eating some food at the hospital, before they would head home. Now, Hasashi is trying to talk to his son. However, Midoriya, he is being distant. It's understandable. Inko doesn't know what happened at the USJ, neither does Hisashi. And Hisashi is trying to get some answers out of his son. Midoriya talking about how he fought that monster head to head. And he remembers that he got sent flying into the wall. Talking about how he was airborne for a few seconds. And how their entire battle almost brought down the entire building. His dad understandably confused, asking how big the place was. Midori explaining how big the building was, the size of a town. 
Asashi understandably shaken by this realization. Now, this is still confusing for him. He doesn't really know the best way to bond with Midori because he's been gone for so long. And it seems like Midori is just, well, understandably pissed off at everything. Now, whenever they do get back home, Yui actually do have Katie, who would appear at the front door. Now, Asashi is confused as to who this person is. Katie wearing a beanie, a shirt, a hoodie, and a pair of jeans, along with at least some running shoes. Now, she would actually see Midoriya and run up to him, ask Midoriya if he would want to hang out, before she actually does look to see Midoriya's father, asking exactly, like, who is he? Hmm? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, who are you? Oh, um, I'm a friend of Midorius. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Hasashi, his father. Oh, I've heard a lot about you. Especially from Inko. Hmm? You know my wife. Well, yeah, me and Midoriya have been friends since we were children. Hmm. It seems like I have a lot of catching up to do. Katie actually watching it, as Midoriya does say that yeah, he can get out of here for a minute. Hazashi tells Midoriya that it would be best for him just to rest right now, and that he should just listen to the doctors. Midoriya is saying that he's already listened to the doctors enough, and he just wants to get out of here for a minute. He's been stuck inside the house only, ever going out, whenever he needs to go to the doctors. So, just let him have this. Now, Katie would take Midoriya. These two heading to the elevator as they would leave. Hisashi heading back to the apartment. Thing that that guy was kind of strange. But if it is, if it is a friend of Midoriya's, then well, who is he going to say anything to? Now, Hasashi does know that Midoriya has a childhood friend. However, Inko never specified as to who it was. Now, he would head back to the apartment, and there you do have Inko, who does actually go over a few things with Hasashi, along with pulling out old photo albums to try and give him a rundown as to how life has been for Midoriya since he's been gone. Now, with that being said, we do have down below, where Midoriya and Katie are both leaving. Katie actually pushed Midoriya's wheelchair, asking him if he's been doing better. Hmm. Ah, define doing better. Well, you know what I mean. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It still sucks, though. Hmm. I can imagine. You just got kicked out of the best hero school there is in Japan. Tss. Wow, thanks for making me feel better, Katie. Oh, please. I know no matter what I'd say, you wouldn't budge and you'd just be arrogant or pissed off at me. Hmm? I'm not pissed off at you. I'm just... You know how I feel, right? Back at square one? Ah, <sighs> even further back, actually. Midoriya says. Talking about how he feels like all his training and time spent with All Might may have gone to waste. Especially if he's just going to end back up here. Katie asking to... For Midoriya... To at least be a bit more specific when he means here. Midoriya telling her that he's basically not in training anymore. He's not going to be a hero. And 
that his parents or his mom might try and stop him from doing what he wants, fulfilling his dream. Now, as Midoriya is rambling on, Katie does actually just do one thing, flicking Midoriya behind his ear. Him actually turning his head and asking exactly why did she just do that, before looking up to see where they are. Hmm? What's this place? Oh, so you finally noticed. This place? It's a diner my mom used to take me to. A diner? Yeah. Anyways, it's got some pretty good food and, well, I think you might like it. Now, these two actually do walk in. And Midoriya, he is surprised looking around. And so is Katie. This used to be a diner. However, the way it looks on the inside and, well, everything, it looks more like it was turned into a cafe now. Katie actually walking up to somebody and asking the question. Finding out that the diner she used to go to, well, it was out of business years ago. And that really does suck. Now, both these two, however, still do take a seat. And it is only whenever people see Midoriya that they are able to click as to who that boy is. Now, a lot of people actually do come walking up to him and ask for autographs and if they could talk with him, wanting to know his story about UA. Especially because of how much happened to him. Now, Katie, she is able to tell people just to let him be, and that he just came here to eat. They're just going to start stressing him out and freaking him out more. Midoriya actually telling Katie that he has it. As he just try politely tries to tell people, to just leave him alone for right now. And that he can't even really sign anything. Especially because, well, his hand doesn't really work. And the one that he used to have, they've already heard about that what happened there. People apologizing. And actually walking away. Before, Katie just simply asked Midoriya if he's telling the truth there. Hmm? Yeah. My fingers are still kind of weird or numb. I do have some feeling in them, but not enough to form a fist. <laughs> are you sure you're going to be okay? Hmm. You didn't sound too confident there. Well, I'm just worried, you know? Yeah, yeah, but still. I think I just need to go see Recovery Girl. Yeah, I think that might be a lot harder, especially since you're not, you know, yeah. But anyways, now, Midoriya, he already ate, and Kitty is made aware of that, after Midoriya does tell her. Her at least buying Midoriya some ice cream. Talking about how this is the least she could do since she does owe him. Midoriya going on to comment that she owes him a lot more than just one thing of ice cream. How many times did he cover for her? Her making a funny joke about how she'll get him next time. And well, this is next time. There. With that being said, Midoriya and Katie do both sit there and talk for a minute. Katie actually being a bit embarrassed that she kind of has to spoon feed Midoriya. Midoriya does find it to be quite funny, Katie finds it to be embarrassing. And then there are actually people who are looking around at them. Now, people are watching them. And they do just assume they are on a date. It's being quite strange. 
Now, it's also quite funny, however. Doria was surprised when Arcady did actually get him pistachio ice cream. And Midoriya did make a comment that he wanted something red. Katie confused for a second before she actually somewhat started laughing, telling Midoriya that she could have just gotten him something like raspberry. <sighs> and it doesn't matter. <sighs> Besides, not like I can complain. Yeah, yeah. But still. I mean... Hmm. I am curious, though. Hmm? Curious about what? Kitty, at least, somewhat, getting up and whispering in Midoriya's ear. Whispering, she's curious as to what the other three quirks are. Hmm. Well, yeah. I don't know. It's just kind of strange thinking about them. Yeah. But I'm just wondering if one could help you. Or if it would just mess you up more. <laughs> Katie. Katie. I think I'll just be fine. Besides. Knowing me, I'll be up on my feet on, in no time. So? You just have to do one thing for me. Hmm? And what is that? Tomorrow during the sports festival, you have to win. Huh? Yeah. I'm not gonna be there. So? I guess you're taking my place. But, but Midoriya, I don't know if I can. Hmm? What are you talking about? I mean, I'll be against guys like Todoroki and Bakugo. Along with that, I've been thinking about it. Strategy-wise, there are people who I cannot fight. <laughs> Katie. Your ability. What is it again? Hmm? <sighs> Consecutive blow. At least that's the term I give it. Well... What was the other half? Hmm? Oh. Um. Consecutive release? Yeah. Now, what exactly does that quirk allow you to do? You're able to stockpile physical momentum. And release it. S so, what are you saying? Well, I'm saying... It would be best if you were to try and stockpile more. How do you, exactly do you stockpile your power again? I don't think you've ever explained it to me. Well, actually it's kind of easy. It involves however fast I move. I stockpile the power whenever I run, whenever I move, the slightest little things. Except I notice I get a huge sizable boost whenever I'm physically attacked or hit. In fact, I think I picked up the ability sometime within our training. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And I released a lot of that power during the entrance exam. So the little that I do have left, it's kind of... Well... You know. Not too good. Hmm. I see. So that's what you're worried about. Yeah. Plus the strain that it does put on my hands. And, well, the rest of my body. Okay. Hmm. I think I can set you up a train with All Might. Huh? Y yeah. I can set you up a train with All Might. And even then, I... Well, I don't know. Roya biting his tongue with what he was about to say, thinking for a minute that he might have to pass one for all away to somebody else. Katie would be the obvious choice. She's seen him use the ability for a long time. She understands him, and he can coach her how to use it up until tomorrow, if need be. However, 
This is whenever somebody does walk into the diner, or now the cafe. As Midoriya does actually look in that direction, and he goes eyes wide, seeing two people. You do have Sir Nighteye, and a small man in a yellow hero outfit and mask. Sir Nighteye just looking around the entire cafe, before he does set his eyes directly on Midoriya and Katie, walking over. As he does tell Midoriya one simple little phrase. They need to simply speak and figure out what he is going to do. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed and have an amazing night. Catch you guys in the next part.